Welcome back to Harbour and the Ball, or indeed, welcome to Harbour and the Ball. Over the last few years I've been working with the engine shed with Rock Rail and just recently I've had a bit of time to play with it and uh, I've revamped how they work. So I'll just show you the trains will go into the engine shed. Once they're in there, after five seconds, the doors will close. I'll then bring them back out, the doors will open, and after five seconds, the doors will close. So. Let's see, let me show you how it works first. So the engine's going now. Once you stop, the engine shadows close back again. Okay. So that's when they are. I'll put them back out one at a time. So after five seconds, the door will close again. I'll bring out the last train there. That comes out. I've also got a slow train, uh, the little uh, class 08, a uh, little shunt here, so I'll bring that out. It's got a beautiful uh, slow running motion this train. That door closes. So I'll take you across to Rock Rail and I'll show you how to set this up. I should say that all doors on this engine shed, they do work. I've got three doors here and I've got three doors at the back end as well and now all are working perfect. So I'll take a trust the computer and I'll show you how I set up in Rockdale. Well, in Rockdale folks, previously I set it as an accessory so I'll just show you the light here, accessory. Go to properties. We set up as an accessory there, this one here. I call it shed light because the engine shed lights. Uh, I'll the description blank. Code of as well. SVG to zero, that's the square here. I change that to a two. Click OK. It stays there like that. But if I open again properties, check it as accessory. OK. See it changes to this all the road crossing for barriers. You can change that you through SVG editor, which is beyond me folks. I'd like to have like a, a door there, but this will do for just now. So go back to that. In here, you can see it's either the interface is here on or off. There's no in between. Now, unfortunately, if it's an accessory there and the door is open, you go to click open, it will actually close it. So there's no way to know it's open or close interface. So I'll put it back to the general. I'll just set it back to a zero, click accessory, so it puts it back to the square. But look at block 30 to start off with, and you can see I put this in here. But rather than set to the accessory, I've actually inserted it as a switch. I'll put a switch. I'll right click on top of it. It's SW9, click on properties. Now, in this side here, it's got the safe position switch, which is the important part because it knows opened, closed, or straight, or left. It doesn't really matter to Rockwell as long as it knows it's either one state or another state. So it's SW9, I've left it open blank. I put in the root IDs block 12 to block 13, block 13 to block 12. If you want to change that, you can click on here. 
switch, but ones you want there and click OK. It does make no difference whatsoever to Rockwell. If it's said there, just for your own convenience to see what routes is. So it's unlocked, locked, all blank, and the switch thing blank, and the type there accessory rather than crossing or switch. Oh, I said it's accessory. I said it's accessory number two, and this is this little, uh, it's like a, a railway crossing for roads, to be honest with you. I say again, you can change that through your SVG editor. I say again, for me, join me. The important part over here is the safe switch position. In my way, if I set this straight, that means the door will close, uh, not in use. Now, the safe switch position can get changed. Uh, you go to, if you come out of that route, Going to edit file, drop real properties, going to automatic. I go down here, right hand side to switch, switch safe position timer. The default is 10 seconds. I'd recommend you leave it 10 seconds. So, in other words, that door is not getting, not needed, uh, not getting used in rock real. After 10 seconds, it would close. I've set it to 5 seconds just for the sake of filming folks. Okay, that. Go back at the properties for the door and go to interface. Now, I have got the door set up on ECOS using my next DCC accessory decoder. So, interface ID is ECOS. Don't bother with nodes, I don't bother with protocol, I don't bother the address, I just put the port, port is 55. Now that is just for my layout for you got your layout, your WIO or whatever accessory decoder you put in there, you this here. Everything else down there is left standard. And in the wiring, you've got to use a all effect or a little sensor to say, by the way, those open by the way, doors closed, you can put your sensors in here, and please tick, use a field event, so it knows once it's up there, the door is open or the door is closed. I say again, in my layout, I've not got that, this uh, sensor's feedback as of yet, but we uh, are working on it, folks. Put the control there, and frog, it's all just left standard there, folks as well. But OK that. The next thing I want to look at is the routes because I need to tell the route when it goes from block 12 to block 13 to open this door. So I've got your tables down to routes. The first one I want to look at is block 12 to block 13. So in general this is all just left blank there, folks. I go into my commands. This is the important part. In the command there, I went down here, I clicked on SW9. Then I put in Rowan, I was open, then OK. I would add that in to this here. So you can see it's in order to end there, folks. SW9, it's a switch, it's a turnout. It's a zero track and it's locked. And also, I'm going to reduce the speed as well. You can tick that on or off. Uh, if you're doing in and out engine sheds, you don't want to be going 100 miles an hour. You want it to be quite slow, but that's that for you. As long as it's locked, that's you. In other words, the train goes in there, this starts moving, gives the command to throw the turnout, and I'll open the door. Train will go. Once the train goes into the engine shed, it stops, the timer starts for the safe switch position. So that's after the train has came in, all the door will back down again. Now, if you're putting in another train, the same door, i.e., this train here, block 11, as soon as you move 
pimp the train into the block, realizes, oh, the door still needs to be open. It won't close until the second train. Same. Very clever, I think. So to let you see it working on rock rail there, folks, I've turned my power on. I switch on the automatic modes and then drag the train from Malcolm Block 12 to Block 13. Door opens up. Train will go in now. I've set up FB17, the feedback, that's the enter command. It goes into the block there. Once it hits this one here, it says that's me in. And after five seconds, the door opens down. Turn on the auto modes. Block 12, block 13. And it goes there, folks. And once it goes into the shed and it stops, I'll start the, the five second timer to bring the door back down again. So I'll play back out. Now before I had a setup using the actions and accessories there and all messing about but I think this way is a lot simpler. Uh, even I could manage to program it in so yeah, I hope you enjoyed it folks. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe, whatever you want there folks. Cheers, bye.